In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this great book on Esther. We thank you that there's a woman that can stand up for her faith and, and for her people. For every time we stand up for faith, we stand up for our people and what we have believed for 2,000 years. So bless this word to our hearts, and may we get excited with Queen Esther as we celebrate the Feast of Purim. May we understand, may we have clarity, and may we have the ability and the desire to share with all people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said. Amen. Now, Purim is, uh, I, I gave you a list of all the Jewish feasts. Do you see all the Jewish feasts? Uh, the major ones uh, of the Jewish feast, uh, which are connected to Christianity. You can't understand your Christian roots until you understand your Jewish roots. In recent times, we have called the Jews our elder brother and sisters. Um, and also, they, we've tried to take away the rhetoric of attack on them. Growing up in my particular neighborhood, we, we didn't attack the Jews, but you could hear kind of some words that were not good. Amen. Anybody hear those words besides me? Okay, and we had, you know, their features and everything else. And we ask, and never again should we do that, but we should love our elder brother Jewish and brothers and sisters. So here now comes the, the word Jews appears, the anti-Semitism. Now here God wins victories. If you're Jewish and you really live according to God, God will prove himself. Why? Because he made a covenant. Approximately up to this point, there are 70 million Christians who have died for their faith since the time of Christ. 70 million. In the last century, the 20th century, anybody remember living back then? Yeah. We were, we, 35 million Christians died for the faith. Half? Last century. Half. Half. And every single day, every eight minutes, a person dies for Jesus every eight minutes. And I think uh, we're going to get our chance if you haven't got it already. Uh, I don't know if we'll be dying anytime soon, but there's a prophesy, prophecy given by the late Cardinal George of Chicago. He says, we will, in this country, he said, we will go to jail for Jesus. And you can already see that through you know, standing for abortion, against abortion, that is, and being thrown into jail. I have a dear friend of mine, she's always in jail. <laughs> and uh, they really do treat you like a criminal when you stand for life. So now comes the time when you got to stand for what you believe. Does everybody ready to stand? Yes. Chapter 9, page 393. Everybody there in the 393? Yes. Now in the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, everybody underline Adar, how many Adars are there? Two. 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 Two, if there is a leap, leap year. On the thirteenth day, the same, so um, when we have the thirteenth and the fourteenth, and you can see this year, it's what day? If you look at your sheet. Ten. It's March 10th. Ninth and tenth this year, okay? Mm -hmm. So remember, the Jewish people follow a lunar calendar. But the problem with the lunar calendar is their lunar calendar only has 354 days. So what they have to do is they have to have another month to put in there every so often. When we have, uh, when we have Passover, when we have Easter, like you said, how many of you ever said it's late this year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you say it's late this year, that means the Jews are going through Adar 2. And Moses, I told you, was born Adar 2 on the year, uh, Adar 2, he was born on the seventh day. So he was born in the Adar. See, this is what the Jews discuss all the time. 
And when the king's commanded edict were about to be executed, on the very day when the enemies of the Jews hoped to get the mastery over them, but which had been changed to a day when the Jews should get mastery over their foes. It is God's plan for you never to lose. How many ever lost something before? Anybody ever panic when you can't find your wallet? When you can't find your pocketbook? Did anybody ever go nuts? Yes. Nobody. When you yes. lost your keys? Yes. yes. When you lost your tooth? <laughs> Did anybody ever go nuts before? Yes. What does it do to your thinking? Now, if you underline that there, the people of God should never have had mastery over them. God's people were to win all the time. Case in point. Joshua comes into the promised land right after Moshe. When he comes into the promised land, every single town he visits, guess how much loss of life there was? Zero. The only loss of life is when the people start putting in their own deities. When you build and turn away from God even a little bit, you're going to find yourself losing. So if you find yourself on a downward spiral, ask yourself the question, am I following the Lord correctly? Now please don't think because you go to church and you might have sung this past week and thrown a buck in the collection. Think of how you've offended God. And that will, now you, everybody, if you underline that, you're supposed to have mastery over your enemies. Now, what scares us is your enemy seems bigger than you and number two, they seem more than you. It's the few that are going to rise up. The rest of your life is called David and Goliath. Amen? Do not be intimidated. So if you underline that there, we're going to have mastery over them. But which have been changed to a day. Now how many days does it, everybody's on the circle of the word day. What, how do you say day in Hebrew? Yom. A yom. When you have a day in the Bible, after the days God created us. A day in the Bible means the judgment day. So how long does it take God to judge? You're going to be judged the second you die and you know whether you're going to heaven or hell. Instantly. There's no second chance. So notice that it takes one day. Isn't that a great line? That God's going to do this in one day. Figure, well, let's have a couple months of fighting. No? How many, how many days does God need? He doesn't need it. When you read the book of Revelation, chapter 19, how is God going to end all of this mess that we're currently in? He's going to speak Italian and say, basta. Which means, enough. Because Jesus already won the victory on the cross and the resurrection. Do we remember that? Yes. Okay, so, so notice here it's one day. Notice you're supposed to have victory over your enemies. So now, you're going to have some spiritual warfare fighting to do for the rest of your life. What is the way to do the, the spiritual fasting? Is to ask the Holy Spirit how you could possibly fast. Now Esther decided not to eat and drink for three days and three nights. I do not recommend that for anybody. I don't know your physicality. If you want to go online and put in there Esther fast is three days. A Daniel fast is 21 days. A Lenten fast is 40 days. Okay? Now, if you're going into Lent, you do not have to fast on Sundays. Because Sunday is always celebrated as the day of resurrection. So you never have to fast on Sunday. If you're a purist and you want to keep that day too, go for it. Amen? Amen. And, and don't bother anybody who is not doing what you do. You just do one thing. Do it. Amen? Amen. Yes. Miss Abel. Don't they say you should not fast on Sundays during that? I don't think, in, in one sense, it's not really anybody's business. Mm -hmm. If I want to fast on Sunday, what I, what I want to do here uh, is I think we are extremely weak in fasting. Amen? I want to show us how that if we fast, you will see the power of God.
to get your prayers answered like never before. How many have a special prayer you've been praying and nothing's been happening? Maybe if you tie it up with a little fasting. Amen? Amen? Amen. So Esther fast is three. Daniel fast is three weeks on vegetables and fruit. Amen? Brother Peter and myself, we did, uh, we did a Daniel fast. Okay. Now, also we did a community fast where we took the whole month, we had an intention, and we went around the room, everybody pick a month, and of course, you don't do it when Christmas is there, or you, you gotta do it after Christmas, and everybody's done burping. <laughs> so then, then we start the fast, and when we start the fast, we see God do great things. So that's an Esther fast, and a Daniel fast, and a Lenten fast. Now please don't do what Moses, Elijah and Jesus did. They did not eat or drink for 40 days. I don't want to see you dead. There was one man, he is now a priest. He, he decided to do that. He decided to do that. He made it, um, but he's, he's very physically fit to do that. If that means anything, I do not recommend anybody not eat or drink for 40 days. Amen. So, um, and if you fast and you're complaining that you're hungry, then I'm going to take a steak and stick it in your mouth. Amen. <laughs> when you fast, you're not allowed to complain. Amen. Amen. See, sir, when you chew meat, they all fall out, you know. Amen. Okay, good stuff. So, how many want to see your enemy defeated? You cannot, you can't, they cannot, now, i got good news for you, you're never meant to lose. Why do we lose? Because we don't know how to win. Yes? Father, if, if someone is fasting for more than three days, are they still drinking water? Yes. Okay. But I don't recommend what Jesus did, 40 days and 40 nights without food and water. Okay, now, if you want to fast, you get Edna. She will tell you never, never to eat beyond four o'clock. And she'll have you on so much fruit and vegetables. You'll be healthy. You'll be better looking. I'm 70 years old. Wow. You'll, you'll be 70 years old. And she, and is the only person I know at 70 can do cartwheels and do splits in the middle. And she looks 40. Only spirit. Amen. Okay, I, I just want, how many see spiritual warfare here? Amen? Isn't that good? Verse 2. Verse 2. Thank you. The Jews gathered in their cities throughout all the province of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on such as, uh, as sought their hurt. And no one can make a stand against them. All right, now, no yawning. When you stand, what does it mean to stand in the Bible? When you do a spiritual warfare in Ephesians 6, around verse 10 to 18, St. Paul mentions over and over again to stand in the Lord. Now, you've got to do Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am the Lord. In the book of Exodus, chapter 14, when the water was starting to divide slowly, when the ebb and flow of the water was going to make dry land by God's power, all of a sudden God says, be still, and here's what you've got to do. God is going to do your fighting. Why do you and I lose? Because you fought. And when you and I have one tendency, because we're born this way, fight on human power. Right? If I call you a bad name, what was your tendency years ago? To call me one back. How many ever did that before? You fought on human power. You're a black man. Well, you are. How many know you fought in the flesh and you're going to lose? So when people say that to me, I just say, you know, I hope God really blesses you real good. And what do they do? They go, Rrr. They become incensed. Amen? Do you see the, do you see the power of uh, doing some spiritual warfare? So underline the word stand there. Um, and 
against them, for the fear of them had fallen upon all peoples. When you do this, an amazing thing happens. They get afraid. So when you curse at me and I don't curse at you, guess what happens to you? You get afraid because I'm not normal. Oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> now, way back when, how many, how many remember the patriarchs? Abraham? Isaac? And Jacob? God did something interesting when his people obey him. He puts on the people what is called the fear of Isaac. The fear of Isaac is the power of God to walk against all obstacles and nothing will harm you. How many would like that grace upon you? That's spiritual warfare. I think my, I told you my mother had that grace. She'd walk up to anybody and say, move away. <laughs> Amen? So how many want to know that we got to stand? And what happens? When we stand and let God do it, then the fear will be upon them. My kids are asking me now, and it's an interesting question, especially when some of them are only in the fourth grade level. What is fear of the Lord? You and I probably remember if I ate a piece of meat on Friday during Lent, I would go to the cooker. But fear of the Lord is being in awe of God. When you do your spiritual warfare fighting, you must be in awe of God. It's the gateway to destroy all the power against you. Notice I didn't say the people against you. I said the power against you. Amen? Because our hope is never to hurt a person. Do people get hurt in all of that? Yes. Verse 3. All the princes of the province of the satraps and the governors and the royal officials also help the Jews. Now, what's starting to happen here is when they decide to fight, the people you least likely to expect will come and aid you. Is that amazing or what? So what does Xerxes do? He sent out his platoon of all these guys to help them out. And so, wow, this is, this is some battle now, amen? How many know you're going to have more people fighting with you than not? Fighting with you than not? For the fear of Mordecai had fallen upon them, if you underline there, verse number three. Remember we have what is called the fear of Isaac. Now it's called the fear of Mordecai. How many would like to have the fear of Kathy? Or the fear of Gerda? Can you imagine such fears? Now if you were to ask Miss Kathy or Miss Gerda, do you have any fears in you now? They would say, they will respond. That's what I thought they would respond. So how many would like to see the fear of God upon, upon everybody? Isn't that amazing how they're, they're really doing this fighting now? This is really good. This is good spiritual warfare. And notice in all the spiritual warfare talks, we never bring up Esther. Verse 4. Thank you. Mordecai was great in the king's house and his fame spread throughout all the provinces. Now, what, what little thing do we hear in there? His, his fame spread through all. It's Jesus. When you really live in the spirit, people will say, come to my house. One day, minding my own business, I got a call. And they said, would you come out here to pray over my daughter? I said, where do you live? They said, Seattle, Washington. <laughs> I said, Seattle? I said, well, it's only a five-minute ride for me unless you're flying me on it. And she said, we want you because we heard of your, what you can do in the, in the kingdom of God. When Jesus walked, what did the people come up to him like today's gospel? Heal him. Now, did they probably see it? No, some did. And what did they say? Heal him. Amen? Because we've heard of you. Amen? So what happens when you become a mighty man and a mighty woman of God? Your name goes out there. Did I go to Seattle? I said, I don't think I can come anytime soon. Amen. We will pay for you. I said, the flight is what, $800 back and forth. Um, 
and just now I, I tried to bribe them first class so it, it, it's uh, I didn't go to Seattle I've been to Seattle but I didn't go at that particular time to Seattle so what happens when you live and you, you do spiritual warfare what happens is you're going to see your name now did that happen to Jesus yes where did Jesus' name go? Lebanon. Where did Jesus' name go? Tyre and Sidon. To Wichipu area. Amen. Are, are, are you seeing all these? So how many would like the power of God through you to go out? How many think you're ready for spiritual warfare now? Isn't this great? Okay. Um, for, for the man Mordecai grew more and more powerful. So he's growing. When you use your faith, underline that, you keep going stronger and stronger and stronger. Verse 5. Thank you. So the Jews struck all their enemies with the sword, slaughtering and destroying them, and did as they pleased to show whom they, who they hated. So what happens to all the people who are enemies? They have to be what? Killed. This is called the ban. B-A-N. The ban means because you have evil hearts, you must die. If you raise up against them. See what Haman started as he's swinging? How many feet in the air is he swinging? 70 feet. It's interesting too because prior to this, a century before, there was a man called Nebuchadnezzar. He builds a 90 foot statue, probably of himself, and you know what he does? 60 feet, 60 cubits, and 6 cubits this way. So, now six cubits is what? 18 inches times six is what? So he has a very tall statue of himself and a very skinny little guy. Why does he, why does he make himself so skinny? Because he wants to say, I can run, I can do this, I can move, I have movability. And guess what numbers he had? He had six instruments, 60 cubits high, and six Six on the skinny. So guess what his number was? Six, six, six. That's why music, um, and he had a strange collection of music. He even had Scotsmen in there singing with bagpipes. So it was six. So the first birth of 666 is in the book of Daniel. Yes? Why they have to kill because of Moses? When you understand that commandment, uh, it's premeditated murder. It's not killing, it's premeditated murder. Because God told them to do it. Because their hearts were evil. And they were not going to change. In Exodus 17, Moses lifted up his hand with two helpers to the right and to the left. And every time they held it up, they mowed down the Amalekites. Why did they die? Because they were evil. There's another group during Saul's time called Agag. What did he, God say to him? Kill everybody. What did he do? He left Agag alive. What did Agag do? He had more babies. It started all over again. It started all over again with Agag. So this is called, in the Bible, it's something that God doesn't tell us to do today. Harem. H-A-R-E-M. It's called the Harem. See, when you look at the Old Testament and the New Testament, you begin to make this assessment. The God in the Old Testament is different than the God in the New Testament. True or false? False. False. It's the same God. But God is bringing the people through because what would happen if they were all alive? Now, if I believe in one God, and you believe in all these gods, I let you live, what would you do if you escaped? Would you come and be converted to my religion? I don't think so. What would happen to you is you'd start all over again. Now, an interesting thing happens right now. This is a very important Bible concept that most people don't know about. The Jewish people had their time with Solomon. And what happened, how many wives did he have? 
Seven hundred. David, you only stick with one, you hear? Not seven hundred. And Solomon gave, gave up living for God the way he should. And guess what happened? Guess what happened? The time of the Gentiles started when the Jews gave up their religion. And the time of the Gentiles, are we're still in it right now. When you read Romans 11, verse 23 to 24 and 25, the time of the Gentiles is just about ready to be over. You are seeing last week hundreds and hundreds of Muslims converting to Christianity. You're seeing when the Jews start to turn, the time of the Gentiles is over. What is the last moment that the time of the Gentiles be over? When the Antichrist rises. Okay? So as soon as he rises, it's over for us Gentiles to come to God. Amen? So this is called the time of the Gentiles. And it starts right during this time period. Verse 5. So the Jews knocked all their enemies. Verse 6. In Susa, the capital, the Jews were slew and destroyed 500 men. And slew, verse 7, they slew Parshandatha, don't name your kids, and your kids. <laughs> Delphin, Ashpatha, he was, he was pathetic. <laughs> Amporatha, Adalaya, Arithatha, am I pronouncing these correctly? Probably not. Paratha, <laughs> <laughs> Adalaya, Arithatha, Parmashtha, Ari Sai, Ari Dai, Vaisatha. They're tongue twisters. Verse 10. The ten sons of Haman, the sons of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, but they lay no hands on the plunder. Remember, what's our temptation? Is to take that which is not ours. Amen? So we can see in this spiritual warfare plan what a thing that we must do. Like, stand. And when we stand, we don't act the way they do. The fear of Isaac, the fear of God, will be upon us, and they will run away. Verse 11. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> the very day the number of those slain in Susa, the capital, was reported to the king. Verse 12. Thank you. The king said to Queen Esther, In Susa, the capital, the Jews have slain 500 men, and also the ten sons of Haman are now... Haman had, uh, had a prayer group going up 10. When you have 10 people in Judaism praying, you have a prayer group. A minion. A minion. So what happens to his minion, they're all swinging. Swinging on the stars, okay? They're just swinging. So what does he have to all of his, all of his uh, children? When you have 10, it means you're bearing fruit and multiplying. But there was no fruit or multiplication because it was soon to be, what, totally over. So how do we fight spiritually? We must take out the seed. And so this is now seed. Now interestingly, when you look at, the, uh, when you look at um, Pentecost Sunday, in the nations, how many nations were coming on Pentecost Sunday? Anybody know how many nations were in the upper room? Fifteen nations, very good. Fifteen nations. They were north, east, south, and west. And who was represented there? These people were there. You'll see the word Elamites. Yes. There's another town over called Elam. And so guess what? When you look at when you look at the list in Acts chapter two, when the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost, you see all of these people and the Elamites coming in. Well, how many of God still loves his people? And God is, God is about renewal. Amen? Verse, um, what have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now, what is your petition? Did we, did we hear that before? What is your petition? Remember Mark chapter 6. Remember Ezra, King Ahasuerus, Xerxes, Charles. And what further is your request? It shall be fulfilled. Now, if you circle the word fulfilled there, any time Jesus, for example, says... In Matthew chapter 5, it will, I have come not to destroy it, but to fulfill it. When you walk in the power of God to do your spiritual warfare, 
you are asking God for fulfilling your days. How many would like to have a fulfilling days ahead of you? Rewarding, you're used, you're touching people's lives through the gospel. Amen? Amen. Fulfilling means this. When Jesus says he comes to fulfill in Matthew 5, he means I will show you new powerful revelation of who you are in me. Hallelujah. How many know there's a lot of revelation that God wants to show you inside of you? Don't you ever sit there again and say, I'm, nothing's going to happen to me. Amen? Turn to the person next to you and say, your best days are still ahead. 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 So what is your petition to God? Remember we, we did a whole teaching last week on how to petition God. It's not upstairs. Let me tell you about those petitions upstairs. <laughs> Hopefully nobody upstairs are listening. They're sick. There's, Lord, we pray. Like today's petitions for government officials. We pray to the Lord. I went, Lord, I'm like, government officials? Does anybody know in Washington I'm praying for them? For the debate tonight. Lord, here, I mean, come on. You know? So what happens, I told you, I told you how we get them. There is a service that mails us all these petitions. The petitions are terrible. And of course, how many want to volunteer to do your own petition? Nobody here is volunteering. So guess what on Sunday? For our government officials, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, who want to be sick, who are going to get sick, who are thinking about sickness. Who are sick and don't know it, who are sick in the head, who are sick in the toes, who are sick. We pray to the Lord. Do you hear our prayers now? Just think for a moment, just, uh, just for a moment. Say you were God listening to that. You know what I would say if I were God listening to that? Oh. Amen. What's a petition? A petition is something you put before God for fulfillment and revelation of who you are and the next step that you'll walk in. You know, you, you know, you know how to really how to pray. The Blessed Mother, when she said to Gabriel, "Make a miracle of my life." You got that, Brother Peter? A petition is is wanting to put before God what your next step is and how to live in the fulfillment and the revelation of how you are to live. How many think we pray those petitions? Mm -hmm. And then, how many, how many know why we don't have petitions for you? Everybody, put a petition in your heart so you all do this. So what, what's your petition? For my kid, for Gene, for Stanley. I mean, what, what, what do you pray for here? Go. And all of a sudden, he's off again. So what's your petition? You just zip. It's what you can get. No, no, no. Petitions always begin in who God is. How many been there yet? Who God is. I, when, I, when I do my holy hours, I say, God, I want this holy hour to be about you. Not about Bill. Billy, don't be a hero. Okay. I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about God. Amen? And when I, it's all about God, I leave away. I am refreshed in the Holy Spirit. Do I hear amen? Amen. Verse 13. Thank you. Esther says, If it please the king, let the Jews who are in Susa be allowed tomorrow to do according to the state's edict. And let the ten, ten sons of Haman be hanged on the gallows. Oh, they're going to go swinging. Verse 14. So the king commanded this to be done. The decree was issued in Susa, and the ten sons of Haman were hanged. The Jews who were in Susa gathered there on the 14th day in the month of Adar. Everybody underline that. So we have this day. Of, that's why when you look at your, the, the new calendars for this year in front of you, it's the 13th and the 14th. And I kind of gave you some, some of the things they do on there. They play act this whole story. And they, if you have kids and we're in a synagogue or right now we have all of our kids dressed up. We have Peter be Mordecai and we, we have Avon be um, Esther going around. Amen. And I'm not going to tell you who Haman is in here. Amen. So, uh, underline verse 15. The Jews are in Susan gathered also on the 14th day of Adar. Uh, and this year it's March 9th and 10th. 
and they slew 300 men in Susa. They pay no hands on the plunder. Now, if you're doing spiritual warfare, what are you noticing? How many are the Jews losing? None. None. Are you supposed to lose? No. Now, if you feel a loss in your life, that you blew it, just get up. It's time to start all over. Because as soon as one thing we say to the Lord, forgive me my sins, you got a brand new start. How many think that's a good idea? Yes. Just start over. And here we go. So now we come in verse 16, the Feast of Purim. So if you look at your Purim sheets, everybody got a Purim sheet there? Okay, these are some of the things that they do on the Feast of Purim, okay? Everybody see uh, Purim there? Okay. You like Purim? How many ever heard of Purim before this? No. Two of you. Boy, this is yeah. a good group. All right, Purim, uh, in Hebrew, it's, uh, it means lots. See the first line there? Okay, everybody on, on Wikipedia? Everybody see that? Uh, from the word poor. And also it means, uh, it, the root word in there is fate. Everybody see it there? And so another, another word for Purim is called the Festival of Lots. Right, in the center section of the page, uh, this is what they do during Purim Festival, exchanging gifts of food and drink known as Mishlao Kamanot. You got that? They donate to charity to the poor as Matanot Laevayonim. When Jesus celebrated with the disciples uh, Passover, do you remember that? <clears throat> when Judas was going out, what did they do? Why did they pounce on him? Because they thought he was going to take the money or get money and give it to the poor. When are we usually the most generous and give to the poor? Usually around Christmas time, we feel that little extra tug of charity in us. So right now there is a giving, and that's called a mitzvah, M-I-T-Z-V-A-H, M-I-T, sounds like a university, M-I-T-S-V-O, mitzvah, A, mitzvah. Next they eat a celebratory meal known as a sadut purim. so they eat. Public uh, recitation of the Megillah. Now, if you underline the word Megillah there, the Megillah is five books of the Bible. No, it's not Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It's the little baby books like Joel, and, and the last one on the list is the book of <coughs> Esther. So the Megillot is the reading during these little special times now, the Jewish person, as you know by now, the Jewish person has to read the whole Bible in one year. But to them, the whole Bible is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now, I think everybody here should kind of to say to the Lord, even now, Lent's coming in a week or so, let me get into the Word of God, start reading it. You may not understand the whole thing. Guess what? I got good news for you. I don't understand the whole thing. And I read it 38, 39 times now. I still don't get it. I, I read passages, and I only, I only pretend to tell you what they are, because sometimes I sit there and say, I don't know what this means. <laughs> so Kathy's sitting there twinkling at 10 o'clock mass, and I try to give her some good information. She doesn't doubt me. She's all oh, good. I think he knows. I'm going, Psh. She didn't ask me, because I had no idea. So the Megila, it means five scrolls, and it's these little books that they start reading. So on March 9th and 10th, what do they got to read? They got to read all of this. We're reading the Jewish Bible now. So they're reading, they're going to have to read the whole book from those two days. And then they read other days for Pentecost. Have you ever heard of Pentecost? Yes. You ever heard of Pentecost? The Jews celebrate? Yes, Pentecost. From the book of um, uh, Exodus 19 is the first Pentecost. Exodus 19, verse 16. And that's the first time tongues was ever heard. It, it, they heard 70 tongues going off. And as soon as the 70 tongues went off, then it came down to one voice, God's voice. 
and he gave the Ten Commandments. What do they read on Pentecost? The Megalot again. What do they read in the Megalot? Joel. Joel's only four what? Little chapters, right? You can read it before you go to bed tonight. So this is, this is how the Jews read all those other books. When you go to a synagogue service, you have to read every, every single Shabbat, Shabbat. You have to read a part of the Torah, because you have to get through by mid-October. <coughs> and then when you do that, you have to have a corresponding prophet that is with the same theme. So that's how they get to read the other parts of the Bible. The Torah, and it's called the Haf Torah. H-A-F-T-O-R-A-H. So when Jesus is in the synagogue in Luke 4, what is he reading there? He's reading the Haf Torah. And I took Irma and Brother Peter there, and, uh, and Pat didn't come. She was eating linguine. <laughs> We went, to, we went to the synagogue where Jesus read this. Uh, did you, what'd you miss? It was just a big spot where he was, so we just went on the spot. And Peter, did you show them the pictures they missed? And did you say, Pat, eating spaghetti, did not come. It took us some time to find that place too. And I said, I am gonna find that place if it kills me, amen. I went up and down every street in Nazareth to look for this spot. We found it. Okay, so we found it. So Jesus was preaching from the Haf Torah. And if you want to read the corresponding, if you want to put in your notes there, in Luke 4, 14 to 18, the other Torah reading was Deuteronomy 25. Let freedom be proclaimed throughout the land. The very reading that's on the Liberty Bell in Philly. And by the way, today when you go to Philly, do you see the bell? The rangers never tell you their scripture at the bottom. I almost had to embarrass them when I took a group of seventh grade from Union City. Mr. Ranger, tell the kids what's at the bottom of the bell. Oh yeah, it's from the Bible. Mr. Ranger, what's the quote? <laughs> he was glad to see me. I paid my taxes for you to tell him what the bell is all about. <laughs> so now we come to, um, back with me to in chapter 9. Are you with me? All right, I'll, 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 what else happens there? The reciting additions and daily prayers and the grace after meals. Now, does everybody pray before you eat? Yes. Does everybody pray after you eat? No. Brother David, did you pray after you ate today? When Cosmolina makes her fish special, do you got to pray before it? And Cosmolina, that was so good. Let's thank the Lord for that. Amen. And when she makes you arroz con pollo. Okay. And um, did you ever eat our, our uh, Dominican delicacy yet, Brother David? Mangu. Yeah. You never had mangu? Do you know how we had it? The story is there's a bunch of American Marines in the Dominican and they're eating this stuff and they said, man, this is good. Mangu, this is good. This is good. That's the story, yeah. So they say, Mangu, Mangu, the man is good, man good, man good, man good. So with the Dominican accent, you said, Mangu. <laughs> you don't know these things. Well and I'm supposed I am supposed to go to the Dominican Republic this year, so I gotta mm -hmm. I gotta get down there. I have a wild time preaching in Spanish. I'm in ecstasy. Gloria Señor! <laughs> <laughs> I mean we're bouncing them. Yeah. <laughs> in fact it was so great. They had jumbotrons outside the church. And so when I was preaching inside the church, the jumbotrons are going all throughout the Dominican Republic, and right next door, shh, shh, la Punta Cana. The what? Punta Cana. It's their beach. It's the big beach, baby. So Father Bill's right next door to Roman going, Gloria, Señor! One lady says, I just heard a voice coming from the heavens, Gloria. 
<laughs> and their towels were around them, the were right off of them. <laughs> you got to see these things I get involved in, David. Anyway, but then um, underline verse 19. There, uh, there is feasting singing, gladness on the 15th. Everybody see the 14th and the 15th verse, uh, verse number 18. Everybody see that? Okay, everybody see the 14th and the 15th? Everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. And uh, there the Jews uh, feasting and gladness. It was the time of joy. Uh, therefore the Jews of the village who live in open towns call the 14th day of the month of Adar as a day for gladness and feasting, holiday making. So they're bouncing around where they got, they got all these little, you know, uh, what do they call them, those little placards and everything else. And, because in one day they defeated their enemy. Amen. So that's still, if, if you're a kid, if this was Hebrew school here, we would have a, um, I'd be helping all you parents help me out with, and I was Rebbe, I was a Rebbe with my kippah on, okay? And therefore the, the towns, a day underline their gladness and feasting and holiday making, and a day on which they send choice portions to one another. So you gotta send little dishes to one another, amen? Ladies, are, what are we gonna do for if this was our, 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 our little group. And what, what, ladies, what's the name of your group? Hadassah. So the ladies would have their womanly group called the Hadassah. Okay, amen. What do we call today? Rosary Altar Society. <laughs> amen. I remember one Rosary Altar Society. <laughs> Girls, ladies, the priest is here. We got to go mass now. <laughs> I said, honey, forget about it. Finish your six. Hey, man, do you see what I see? You make this stuff up. No, this <laughs> A day which they send so choice portions to one another. How many would like? How many would like young? Um, how many would like this day coming? Bori, verse twenty. Thank you. And Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to the Jews who were all in the province of King Ahasuerus both near and far. Now what is about being both near and far? Later on, Paul would use, no, you want to, Paul would use that for Ephesians 2.20, for the Jews here and the Gentiles far away. Now what does it mean, Jews near and far? This is called, you've all heard this word before, the diaspora. Have we ever heard that? Diaspora is a word meaning the seed is what? spread all over the place. What was Jesus' first parable? It was about the diaspora. Does anybody know that? The seed, the sower and the seed? Hello, are you getting this? His first parable in Mark 4 is about the seeds going out. Where did he do that? On the Bay of Parables. And Peter got a million pictures with his B&H special. So there's the diaspora, there it is again, the near and the far. Paul picks that up in Ephesians 2 and 20. You got to read it really in between the lines. Mm -hmm. Then he says, verse 20, 21, and joining them that they should keep the 14th day of the month, Adar. Now, what's interestingly, what days did they have to keep prior to this? Leviticus 23. There are seven feasts. Now, if you look at the sheets I gave you on the feast, these are some of the minor feasts. So you can see what day this year they are. And, um, you know, they, they're going to have a lot of tears. They, they cry in August because that's when the temple was destroyed, called Tish Ba'ab. Do you see that there? So you, you can see all these things. And so the Jewish people, if we, if we were Jews here, we would have all these minor celebrations. But we would have major feast days. What's our major feast day? It's Christmas and Easter, of course. Easter is more superior. But also we would have St. Patrick's Day, everybody know what that means. Um, it's the, the Annunciation Day, everybody would know what that means. So we had special feast days or honoring or, or let's do a Novena to St. Therese and the Jew. Those would be our little special days. So there are major feasts and there are minor feasts. Are you getting this? Okay. <coughs> So, and by the way, when you look at the, the, the sheet on Purim, they listen to the book of Esther in the synagogue, sending food parcels and giving charity, dressing up in costume, eating a festive meal, including the Hamadashen, 
And look what they called it. The Hamadashen. Haman's <laughs> ear. Yeah. Oh. I told you. Haman's ear. Wow. Okay. So you, you get you get a. Uh, how many would like to say, here's your ear, baby? <laughs> Haman's ear. Is that interesting? Amen. So even in sweets, they're destroying their enemy. Well, next he says there, verse 22. Thank you. Um, as the days in which the Jews got relieved from their enemies, and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness. Isn't that who we are? The prophet Isaiah 64 says that God wants to turn us from sorrow into gladness. If anybody here is experiencing sorrow, gladness is soon to come to you. And from morning into a holiday. Amen? So when, when does that come? Isaiah 35. You're supposed to see that everything that you're going through, the saddest you experience, will turn into an holiday, man. That they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending choice portions to one another and gifts to the poor. There, there it is. So the Jewish people always have to be reminded of the poor. And it says that they are especially reminded of the poor on holidays. We kind of do the same thing, don't we? Now, maybe some of us go and do a, a, a kitchen on Thanksgiving. How many would like to do that? Sort of turkey and stuffing. And, or, or, and so you're getting stuffed. But I think we should do that year-round, don't you? Yes. And see if we can really help out that way. So notice, notice here, underline verse 22. So the Jews undertook to do all they had begun, Mordecai had written them, for Haman the Agagite, remember the Agagite was the Amalek. And who was Amalek? He was, in Saul's time, they were the enemies of the Jews who did guerrilla warfare. The son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to destroy them. So if you circle the word Agagite, you circle the word there. There's, by the way, are the Jews have people wanting to destroy them right now? Yeah. Yes. If you want to do some fun reading, read the Six Day War in June 1967. The Jews were surrounded by five nations. And there are reported unbelievable miracles. When guns rang out against them, not one of the bullets hit them. Unbelievable miracles that you see that God is still fighting for his people. The miracles are abounding. And here's our problem at this juncture. They are surrounded at this second by 175 million enemies. And right now they're practicing in Israel, behind the scenes for us. They are practicing at this very second. They are practicing how to fight a war on five fronts. Wow. One day we were with Peter with his B&H special on the Sea of Galilee. And Irma was taking with Jesus walking on the water lessons. <laughs> we were down where there was the, uh, the water and that little tiny house with the stones. And we're going down to see where Jesus multiplied. I looked up in the air and I saw the dreads. The jets just go, I'm like, wow. uh oh, mm -hmm. something's happening. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to panic Peter. Yeah, I just let him enjoy the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, how many, how many ever, when you've been in Israel, do you see them zooping out? Mm -hmm. And every time I'm there, Gaza Strip is, they're attacking the south. Mm -hmm. And we want to go to uh, Mount Sinai. We can't get in because too many attacks down there. Mm -hmm. So they blew it. So I, we got to go in there and just go, I'm going in no matter what. Verse 23, so the Jews undertook as they had, Haim, uh, verse 24, Haman uh, the Agagai, the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to destroy them. And they cast Pur. Okay, everybody in the line, there's the Purim, everybody. So what does Pur mean? It means the fate or the lots. Okay, we just read that in our notes. And when Adam... Uh, to crush and destroy them. So their sister Edna, they got to be crushed and destroyed. Because these are snake-like people, they'll come up again. They'll come up again to attack. You, you let one of them go, they'll come up. Amen? Verse number 25. But when Esther came before the king, he gave orders in writing that this wicked plot which he devised against the Jews should come upon his own head. 
and that he and his son should be hung on the gallows 70 feet high. Well, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Then they call these days Purim, underline that. There's the Feast of Purim. I can't wait to see the show, how they're going to do Purim there. Okay, I bet it'll be with a little musical interlude there. And therefore, because of all that was written in this letter, and what they had faced in this matter, and what had fallen them, verse 27, the Jews who ordained and took it upon themselves and their descendants and all who joined them, that without fail they would keep these two days. So now there are days that are, are coming up. So right now they put a promise, we will always keep these days every single year. <clears throat> We're going to get into another, another feast called Hanukkah. Hanukkah is in the New Testament, just for your FYI. It's in John chapter 10. It's called the Winter Festival that Jesus was keeping the Feast of Hanukkah with a small group called the Maccabees. Maccabees fought against the humongous army. At the end of time, when the time of the Gentiles is over and the Antichrist is going to be done away with, the nations of the world will attack called Armageddon. There will be so many nations and they will go against Jerusalem. If you walked in Jerusalem, there's a plain right in front called the Kidron Valley. They're going to march on that Kidron Valley. There will be a severe earthquake. Mm -hmm. Zechariah 14. It will level the playing field. They will come in to attack Mount Zion, where the Jews will be held up. And what will happen when they come in to attack Mount Zion, heaven is going to literally do some fighting for them. Amen. And so the Jews will never, 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 never be defeated. Mm. Hitler tried. Mm. They will never, 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 never be defeated. It's prophesied in Deuteronomy 32. They will never be knocked down. So please, precious people, please have a love for our Jewish elder brothers and sisters. And I always pray when I see them walk in the streets, Lord, open their eyes that they can see Jesus. Right now, the UK is doing what the US is doing in September, making all of our kids learn the LBGTQ agenda. They had, they had all these Orthodox Jews with their backs to the camera, probably B&H camera, Brother Peter. They were all with their backs, and they said, we will not teach our kids the LBGTQ agenda. Amen. That is not going to happen. Amen. So, and, and by the way, there are demonstrations now going on, and we should say the same thing. Amen. I don't want my sons and daughters learning that agenda. That's right. That's so right. we're going to see the attack. we got to stand up. So everybody underline verse 26. After, because of all that was written in this letter, and all that faced in the matter, and what had fallen the Jews ordained, called it upon themselves in 27, their descendants will join them, that without fail they would keep these two days according to what was written in the time appointed every year. Verse 28. Thank you. That these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation in every family, province, and city, and that these days of worship should never fall into disuse among the Jews, nor should the commemoration of these days cease among the descendants. Why do you got to keep those two days every day? because you've got to tell your kids and your grandchildren. We're going to get through. And God has have a purpose for us. This is called, we're going to stay in there and fight. Now, what is our day when we, we tell you the same thing? It's when Jesus in Matthew 16, 31 says, the gates of hell will not prevail. And right now our church is a mess, as you know, but guess what? We're going to get through. We're going to get through. Fewer, that's okay. Maybe a little poorer, that's okay. But everyone in here who follows Jesus Christ, you're getting through, amen? amen. We're gonna make it to the other side, we're getting through. So we have in our sacred scriptures the same word, we're gonna get through to the end. So that's what the poor Reem says, we're gonna make it no matter what our enemies are going to do. Verse 29, what's that? <laughs> Then Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihel, and Mordecai the Jew, gave full written authority, confirming the second letter about Purim. Verse 30. Thank you. 
Letters were sent to the Jews to the 127 provinces of Hasuarius. Even they went to India, where um, Tina was born. In words of peace and truth, verse 31, and that these days of Purim should be observed at the appointed seasons. Now, what's an appointed season? It's called a meodim. M E O D I M. Ever say meodim? M E O D I M. Meodim. Meodim means you've got to keep your appointments with God. And what's what's our what's our weekly appointment, everybody? Yes. yes, you got to keep your appointment. And we're going to see soon there's going to be a big reduction of times you can go to church here. Mm -hmm. Everything is going down. So get ready, you're going to hear about that soon. Mm -hmm. Everything is going down. Amen. So this will be the meodim. So there has to be at appointed times that we collectively as a group of people meet the Lord. Do I hear amen? Amen. Meodim. Go, Queen Esther, go. Verse 31, that the days of Purim should be observed at their appointed seasons as Mordecai the Jew, Queen Esther enjoined upon the Jews as they lay down for themselves and for their descendants with regard to their fast and their lamenting. So now, again, there is only required for the Jews to fast how many days? One. 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 Yom Kippur. That's it. But now notice what they're doing. They're adding the Esther fast, the Daniel fast. And notice that sheet I gave you. There's a lot of little fasts in there if you read that sheet on the, on the holidays. So there's all these little extra little fasts that they, they enjoy on them. Amen? Amen? So should we fast? Yes. yes. Do we need to fast? Yes. Obviously, yes. And what's the lamenting crying? What happened? Verse 32. Thank you. The command of Queen Esther fixed these practices of pouring it was recorded in writing. Now, they have here in chapter 10, they have when it was King Ahasuerus laid tribute on the land and on the coastlands of the sea. And it's, it's really nice. Things go, go for a while. Everything's okay until the leader does what? Dies. When he dies, guess what? The problems start all over again. In Exodus chapter 1, they were under the Pharaoh. He died, and all hell broke loose that we should kill all the baby boys by that Pharaoh. So, verse 2, And all the acts of his power and might and the full account of the high honor of Mordecai, to which the king advanced him, are not written in the book of the Chronicles. Now, this is not the book of Chronicles in the book of Chronicles. This is uh, their book called the book of Chronicles. Okay, so it was like a ledger when they would write these things down. So please do not think it's the book of Chronicles here. Uh, uh, Media and Persia. Now, who's Media and Persia? Um, who's going to, who took over? Who took over was called, a man called Nebuchadnezzar. He was the king of Babylon. What was the next kingdom after that? Media Persia. It's during the time of Media Persia that we have the rise of the three kings. The rise of the three kings. That's why I'm a firm believer that the three kings use the book of Daniel and Esther on their journey to find Jesus. Verse 3, For Mordecai the Jew was next in rank to King Ahasuerus, and he was great among the Jews, popular with the multitude of the brethren, for he sought the welfare of his people and spoke peace to all his people. So ends the book of Esther, the Jewish version. Did you like Esther? Yes. yes. And you never heard the story before? No. You now know the story in full. And now, um, we're going to pick up there with Galatians. So it's a brand new book of Galatians. Sister. So, Father, in the book of Ezra, you know, when... That's another good book to say. Yeah, so in the book of Ezra, when they wrote letters to Darius, Stop the Jews. Artaxerxes was one of the ones who went and went back. That's right. Then he, was that, do you think he did that because of that? Yes. Absolutely. Wait, wait, wait. Absolutely. He just got it. So, the story was Greek. 
we can look, we can look at the prayer. We'll look at one prayer next week. Mm-hmm. And then we'll go into Galatians. Good stuff? Yeah. Did you like Esther? Yes. You finished another book of the Bible, and the, yes. the Hebrew version. Heavenly Father, we just praise you. We just glorify your name. We thank you for the book of Esther. We are surrounded by enemies every step of the way. But our life is in Jesus Christ, and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Live your life inside of me, Lord, and the enemy has to step away. And Lord, may I not be fearful in this hour, but I may be a leader in my community to bring people to victories in Jesus Christ. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.